Welcome to the course on configuring SharePoint 2013 server for apps development and deployment. At times, we as developers might feel developing apps is much easier than configuring our SharePoint server for the apps deployment due to various technical issues that actually pops up while we're trying to deploy the apps to the SharePoint server. I've taken some time to list out all configurational steps that we need to perform in order to deploy apps successfully to our SharePoint server in this course. Thus, the main objective of this course is to teach you how we can configure our SharePoint 2013 in-premises server to support apps development and deployment. So, before we move on to the technical side of this code, let me introduce myself first. My name is Kamashwar Serma. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer since 2004, and I'm MCSD on SharePoint applications as well. I've been delivering both on-site and live online trainings on various Microsoft technologies for more than 10 years. In this code, initially, in Section 2 of this code, I'll actually try to develop a very basic SharePoint app and I'll try to deploy the same. Because my server is not a configure for apps development and deployment, obviously I will not be successful in deploying the apps. Thus, my focus will be on fixing the various issues that comes up in section 3, section 4 and section 5 of this codes and finally in section 6 of this codes will be in a position to develop and deploy apps to a SharePoint 2013 in-premises server successfully. So before I explain to you more configurational issues, first of all, let's try to understand the set of what I have actually on this computer. You can notice I'm currently working on a Windows Server 2012 R2 server and I have also installed Active Directory and I have made this computer as a domain controller. My domain name is contuso.com. Please do remember this name because throughout this course I'll be using this domain name at different stages. Also you can notice yes I do have a GB of RAM and it's a 64-bit operating system and on this computer I have SharePoint 2013 server installed successfully. Let me take you to my SharePoint Central Administration, so which is actually working perfectly. And also you can notice under Manage Web Applications, I, do, I have already created a sample web application, uh, which is running on the port number 25000. And for this web application, I have already created a root site collection as well. So if I can click on Application Management, and if I can click on view all site collections, you can see this web application has got a root site collection. And this is the one that is already been created. And also the content database for this site collection, uh, for this web application is SPS 2013 training. Also in my other tab, you can see the site collection is running successfully on the port number 25,000. So, at this point of time, SharePoint is installed successfully and I'm able to do everything. So, does that mean, can I actually go ahead and try to develop apps and deploy apps to this site collection? That's what we need to actually inspect. So, now what I'll do, I'll actually take you to Visual Studio and try to develop a simple app and I'll try to deploy that. Before I do that, you can notice I'm actually currently logged in onto this computer as administrator, which is my system account. So let's go back to Visual Studio. So how do we actually create apps for SharePoint? Yes, we can simply click on File New Project. I'm selecting C Sharp and at Office slash SharePoint, I can go for Apps and I'm selecting Apps for SharePoint 2013. I'll leave my .NET Framework with my latest .NET Framework version and I'm actually going to put the files into a folder called as Apps Training and this is going to be my 
very first tab. And I'm actually going to click on OK. So it is asking me, what SharePoint site do you want to use for debugging your app? Yes, I'm fine with my 25,000 site collection. How do you want to host your app for SharePoint? Yes, initially I'm going for a SharePoint hosted in this demonstration. Simply click on Finish. So basically what I'm trying to show you now, I'm creating an app and I'm not actually going to do any implementation for this app. My aim is to actually try to deploy and show you whether it will be deployed successfully or do we need to really do something. So obviously when I go back to my view and solution explorer, I can see my app predefined folders and various other files. We're not interested in this code at this point of time. Simply go ahead and try to deploy the solution. And when I go to my output window, you can see it is actually trying to deploy my app. But I have a very special error. It's trying to tell me that an error occurred in deploying your app and the system account cannot perform this action. So the error what I'm getting currently it has got nothing to do with apps configuration. It is actually trying to tell me because I'm currently logged into this computer as a system administrator, I cannot actually develop and deploy apps. So that is the first rule. So whenever you wanted to actually develop apps and deploy apps, please be ensured that you're not logged in as administrator onto that computer. So how am I going to fix this issue? Yes, I'll try to create an Active Directory user and I will log in as that user and then I'll try to redeploy this app. As we have just seen that when you are actually logged in as system administrator, you cannot actually develop and deploy apps. For this, we need a new user. So let's go to administrator tools and go to Active Directory users and computers. So here, let's actually try to create a new user. I'm going to call this guy as apps developer and I can give his login name also as apps developer at contoso.com say next. I will set password never expires and I'm going to set some password. Simply say next and finish. So now we have a new user called as apps developer. So I'll be logging in as apps developer in my subsequent lectures to be able to develop and deploy apps. But we need to do one more thing. Double click on this apps developer and make him a member of the admin group. So I can simply select administrators, say OK. So at this stage, this guy is equal to an administrator. So now in my subsequent lectures, I will be logging in as apps developer and then we'll try to develop the apps and we'll try to deploy the apps. As I'm actually ready now with this new user called as apps developer, he's also a member of admin group at this stage. I need to do one more setting in the SharePoint Central Administration before I can actually log off and log in as apps developer and try to develop the app using Visual Studio. For that, let's go back to the SharePoint Central Administration. And you can notice when I click on the application management and I click on change site collection administrators you can see for the site collection 25,000 the primary site collection administrator is administrator himself because I'm actually going to log off now from system account and log in as app developer and I'm going to access this site collection even for apps developer he needs access to the site so I'm actually going to set the secondary site collection administrator as apps developer and I click on OK. So with this we have actually solved the problem what I'm actually getting here. So now the next step is I'll actually log off now 
and I will log in as apps developer and try to deploy the same app one more time and let's see what happens then. Okay, now you can notice I'm actually logged in as the new user, not as system admin. I'm logged into the system at this stage. I'm logged in as apps developer too. He's also a member of the admin group. So now what we'll actually do, we'll actually go back to Visual Studio and try to create a new app and we'll try to deploy that app and let's see what happens now. So always try to open your Visual Studio as an administrator and from Visual Studio I'm, I'm now going to create a new app again and we'll try to deploy that app one more time. So I can go for the C Sharp settings and say start Visual Studio. So inside Visual Studio let's actually go ahead and try to create a new project. Let's go ahead and try to select apps and click on apps for SharePoint 2013 and maybe I'm going for some apps demo and I leave the name as SharePoint app 1 and I try to click on OK. So we're going to use that 25,000 site collection for debugging our app and I'm going ahead with the SharePoint hosted app and try to click on finish. So now the only difference is we're not trying to create this app as not a system account but as apps developer 2 because we got an error in, the, in our earlier demonstration that because we cannot deploy or develop apps as system account we have just logged in as new user called as apps developer 2. So pretty shortly I'm going to deploy this app as apps developer 2 and let's see what happens. So as I said, I'm not interested in this code at this stage. Simply go ahead and try to deploy the solution. Just click on view and output window. Now you can see I have another message. The local SharePoint server is not available. Check that server is running and connected to the SharePoint form. As a matter of fact, I'm actually able to access my SharePoint central administration on the port number 50,000. I'm also able to access my site collection perfectly, but Visual Studio is not actually allowing me to deploy my app. So this is the second error that I'm getting when I'm trying to develop and deploy this app. First error that we have seen is you cannot deploy this as system account. We have a great for it and we have created a new user called as apps developer 2 and we're now logged in as apps developer 2 and now we're trying to deploy the app now we got a different message that the local SharePoint server is not available so now I'll show you how to fix this issue again for this I need to log back in as the administrator to this domain controller to fix this issue You can now see I'm actually logged in to this domain controller as an administrator again to address the issue that we have just seen. So to fix that issue, what you have to do, you have to actually go back to SQL Server and make the apps developer 2 user as a DB owner for a couple of databases. So normally when you are in the SharePoint Central Administration, so we've seen that we have the SharePoint administration was running on the port number 50,000 and also we were having the our site collection running on the port number 25,000. So if I click on the application management and if I click on view all site collections you can see our web application 25,000 is running on a port uh, is having a database like SPS 2013 training. This is the content database that I have given at the time of creating this web application. The error which I was actually getting was because the apps developer 2 user is not having enough rights to speak to this database. So that is why in SQL Server I can right click on login say new login and select the user apps developer 2 
say okay and uh, under user mapping you have to actually give this guy for both SharePoint config your form database as DB owner also for the SPS 2013 training content database you need to actually make him as DB owner say okay so now you can see the apps developer tree is pretty much available and he's obviously one of the user for the SharePoint underscore config database as well as for our web application content database so now we'll actually log in as apps developer 2 and we'll try to deploy our app one more time to see whether this will actually fix my issue or not okay so now you can see I'm actually logged in as apps developer 2 again now so now let's go back to Visual Studio but ensure that you run Visual Studio as an administrator so now we're actually going to open the same app that we have just created in fact and we know that we have got an error when I ran this example a minutes ago saying the local SharePoint server form was not available but this time I'm actually going to deploy the solution one more time. I can see in the output window, so the actual process that is going on behind the scenes for actually deploying this app. So now let's actually see whether our app will get successfully deployed or we will get another error. You can notice I got an error and the deployment has actually failed this time the error is a bit different it is actually trying to deploy my app for SharePoint and it is trying to tell me the app for SharePoint is not installed on this server and also you can notice here an error occurred in deployment step install app for SharePoint app management shared service proxy is not installed that means the error which we were getting earlier that the local SharePoint form server is not available is been fixed when I have actually made apps developer 2 as the DB owner for the SharePoint config database as well as for the content database of my web application. Now this is a perfect situation for us to understand that in spite of your having a successfully running SharePoint server deployment of apps is not that straightforward. If a SharePoint server has to be configured properly in order for us to develop and deploy apps and this is what my course is actually going to teach you how we can configure our in-premises SharePoint 2013 server for deploying apps now we understand that SharePoint 2013 server has to be configured separately by us in order for us to develop and deploy apps before I show you the steps of configuration, first let's try to understand what exactly is an app. An app for SharePoint is a custom built application which provides a specific functionality to the end users. One of the beauty of apps is apps are actually deployed to their own unique domain name instead of the same domain name where the SharePoint site is actually hosted. So that means your apps will actually get executed in a different subsite than the site which is actually hosting it. So what is the advantage of that? Isolation of the functionality is the main thing about apps. When you isolate the functionality of app into a different subsite altogether and because your apps are running under a different process for any reason it will not affect the performance of our actual SharePoint site which is actually hosting the app. So that is how when you're actually developing an app the main point for us is isolation. We develop an app and the app will run independently in a different subsite with a unique domain name altogether. Now how do we get the unique domain name for our app that we need to configure it from the DNS server. So as we have just learned that because apps will actually run inside a different website altogether, we need to actually configure all those stuff from the DNS server. 
So the need for configuration is because of all these things. Firstly, yes, I said apps runs in their own app domain. Each installation of app has a unique URL. So in order to get a unique URL for our app, we'll have, we'll, we'll have to actually configure the domain name services in our environment to be able to host the apps. I'll show you in my subsequent lecture how to configure it from DNS. Also, you can notice when you install an app to a site, a subweb of that site is created to host the app content. So we, we are pretty much clear with this point. Whenever you are actually developing an app and when you deploy that app, the app will run in its own subsite, which we call it as app web. You can notice the subweb for the app is hierarchically below the site collection but has an isolated unique host header instead of being under the site's URL. So it will not be under your site collection URL. It will be altogether in a different subsite with a different unique URL. How that URL gets assigned to our app, we'll have to see that. So because the URLs are different for the app web as well as for the host web, the difference in these domain names provides a layer of isolation for our apps. And also you can notice the use of different domain name from the SharePoint sites prevents cross-site scripting between the apps and the sites and any unauthorized access to the user's data. So with this, in this slide, the, it's pretty much clear for us because apps have to run in a different subsite altogether, apps are supposed to get a unique URL. And how the unique URL will be assigned to our app, it will be based on the settings what we do in the DNS. In my subsequent lectures, I'll show you how to configure the DNS so that it can actually assign a unique URL for our apps. So now we understand in order to get unique URLs for our apps, the DNS server needs to be configured. So before I actually start configuring the DNS server, there's one important thing that you need to verify. That is both SharePoint administration and the SharePoint timer services must be running before you start any of the other steps. So let's actually go back to the administrative tools and then to the services and just verify the SharePoint administration service and then the SharePoint timer services are actually running. You can notice I'm inside administrative tools and then I double click on services. Just type sh and you can see the SharePoint administration service is actually running and also I can see my SharePoint timer service are running. So these two services must be running. And also please be noted, currently I'm actually logged in as the domain controller onto this computer. So most of the steps that I'll be executing now, I'll be doing it as an administrator. Now it's time for us to know how to configure DNS. So some of the important steps here, you must configure a new name in DNS to host your apps. But we have some conventions that we need to follow when making the configurations inside the DNS. To help improve security, your domain name should not be a subdomain of the domain that actually hosts your SharePoint site. For example, you can notice my domain name is actually contoso.com on this domain controller. So I would rather prefer to create a subdomain under DNS like contosoapps.com instead of app.contoso.com as my domain name. So now let's actually go to DNS and try to create a new subdomain called as contosoapps.com. Now let's see how we can start configuring the DNS server. I'm inside the administrative tools and double click on the DNS server. So now you can see I'm inside the DNS manager. The first thing that you need to do under forward lookup zones, here you need to actually create a new zone. So I can simply right click here, I can say new zone. Just simply click on next. 
select the type of zone you want to create i'm happy with the primary zone then select how you want zone data to be replicated i'm also happy with this default option say next what's the zone name so i'm going to call this as contosoapps.com and say simply next next and finish so that is how we're actually now done with the creation of a new forward lookup chart So after we have successfully created a forward lookup churn under DNS Manager, the next step is to specify a C name, what we call it as canonical name. So basically we have to create a wildcard alias record for the DNS name, which actually allows the individual apps to have unique domain names within your app domain. So basically, as I said, every app will have a unique URL. So that unique URL will be generated because of the wildcard alias star that I'll be giving it as part of my C name. So as I said, the app hash portion is dynamic. And by creating a wildcard domain, you don't have to create a new domain for every app because apps will run in a different subdomain every time with a different unique URL and that unique URL has to be generated based on some app hash ID and that will happen if you can create a C name with a wildcard alias of star. Now let's go back to DNS manager and create a C name. You can now see I'm back in DNS manager. I'm at the forward lookup zone that we have just created. Call it as contosoapps.com please right click on that and click on new alias C name and here I said the C name has to be the alias name has to be star it's a wildcard character and we'll leave that fully qualified domain name as contosoapps.com you can see star.contosoapps.com exactly at this place your app URL will be constructed we'll see that later and then you have to specify the fully qualified domain name for the target host in my case, my server name is myspserver.contosoapps.com is going to be my FQDN for the target host and say OK. So this is how we did our very first step of configuring things in DNS Manager. I have created a new forward lookup zone and for my forward lookup zone, I have also created a new CNAME entry. Now, this is the most important thing about this codes, understanding the actual URL structure of our app. So, what type of URL do we actually get when we deploy our app? And what are the different pieces of this URL are actually meant for? So, ideally, if you look at this one, this, this is how our URL looks like. An app URL is made up of many pieces. The first thing is an app prefix. So basically, an app prefix is any string that we set inside SharePoint Central Administration as a form administrator. We haven't done this step, but we'll be doing that. If we don't specify anything, the default is default, but in this example, I'm going to name this as app. So that means if I create any apps on this server shortly, first thing I will have it as app hyphen. The next thing is the app ID. So this app ID is a hexadecimal number that gets generated internally when the app is installed onto a different subdomain. So this app ID will be generated automatically for us. And that's one of the reasons why I have actually given the C name as star, wildcard alias. The next thing is the app underscore base underscore domain. This is any string that we set by by the form administrator in the administration or of course we can do that with the SharePoint management shell as well. So we have already created the app underscore base underscore domain as contosoapps.com in our DNS server. So at the end of the day so far it will be like so it will be like uh, app followed by the hexadecimal ID of app ID, followed by 
contosoapps.com and after app based domain then you will have the the actual url of your host web this is the related url of the parent host web so every app has to be hosted onto some website which is called as a host web. An app runs in its own website called as an app web. So like this you have two different terms that we always use during apps development like host web and app web. And after the host web URL then you will have the app name. Obviously the app name we will be mentioning at the time of developing the app. So let me summarize my explanation in the previous slide about the app URL structure. Try to understand by looking at one of the sample URL of an app. Yes, you can see HTTP colon double slash app is an app prefix. Some people call it as tenant as well. Hyphen. This name, as I said, will be given by me as a SharePoint administrator in the SharePoint Central administration pretty shortly. This name can be anything of your choice hyphen this is your ha app id which is your hexadecimal id that gets generated randomly for us followed by the the sub app domain that we have just created in the dns manager which is contosoapps.com and that is followed by your host web and finally i have an app name so that's how a url structure looks like Every URL, sorry, every app will have its own unique URL which will be comprised of these pieces. So, as I have explained in my previous slides, as we when we talk about apps, we always come across with two different terms like host web and app web. So, let me try to define you what is exactly a host web and app web pretty quickly, and then we'll start with the demonstrations. So, as I said, the website to which the app is installed is called as the host web. And the special website to which the app is deployed is called as an app web. So, frankly speaking, our focus is fully on the URL of the app web. Anyway, the URL for the host web is ready for us. In order for us to create a URL, a unique URL for our apps, we have started configuring the DNS manager and we still have to do so many things in the SharePoint Central Administration. So by now, it should be very clear for all of us that when you start developing apps for SharePoint, the main thing is a unique URL has to be assigned for our app. And that will only happen if you configure it from DNS server as well as from the SharePoint server. So far, I did the configuration aspects from DNS Manager. In my subsequent lectures, I'll show you how to do them from the SharePoint administrations. The remaining steps will try to execute. Once that is done, we'll go back to Visual Studio and we'll try to deploy the app that we weren't able to successfully. So that's how you have to configure your SharePoint 2013 server properly from DNS Manager as well as from the SharePoint Central Administration. Only then your server will allow you to develop and deploy apps. So from DNS Manager perspective, whatever steps we need to perform, we have actually completed them. Now it's time for us to do the rest of the configuration from the SharePoint Central Administration. The first and foremost important thing in order for us to develop and deploy apps, we need to actually have an app management service. So in the SharePoint 2013 Central Administration, when you go into the application management and when you click on the manage service applications, if you already don't see app management service, then you have to actually create a new app management service. So let's go to SharePoint Central Administration to see how we can create an app management service. So you can see now I'm inside SharePoint Central Administration. In order to create the app management service, first you can click on application management and the service applications, click on manage service applications, click on new and select app management service. 
and specify a name something like say my app management service 3 and this is your SQL server so where you have installed it and this is going to be the name of the database that it will create for our apps management service and we can actually have Windows authentication to get connected to SQL Server and you may also have an application pool with the same name as your service application name need not be same I'm just giving it as same and finally we can leave that security account as administrator and it will also create a management service application proxy and it should add it to our default proxy group leave that as checked and click on OK so this should actually create for us a new app management service application along with the database in SQL Server so finally now we can see the my app management service 3 has been created along with a proxy so obviously when you select the app management service and go into the properties you can notice it's the same screen that we had at the time of creating it and you can see there's a database here so at the time of creating this app management service also it has actually created for us an app management database for us so this is how app management service must be created in order for us to develop and deploy apps to the SharePoint 2013 server so next to app management service we also need to configure another special service called as subscription setting service unfortunately the subscription setting service cannot be configured with the help of the user interface so we need to actually get that done from powershell so let's go to the sharepoint 2013 management shell and i'm actually going to run a script that is actually going to create for us the subscription setting service before I run that command let me actually explain to you what this PowerShell script is doing first of all I'm creating a variable in PowerShell called as dollar account so in PowerShell all your variables have to be prefixed with dollar sign and then I'm running a command let get hyphen SP managed account and then your domain name in my case my domain name is Contoso and then the administrator so the credentials the username we have actually stored into a variable called as account so that I can use this username everywhere in the rest of my script then I'm creating another variable called as app pool sub svc the name of the variable can be anything then you should say new hyphen SP service application pool so this command let helps you to create a new application pool and what's the name of the application pool I'm trying to give it as my sub settings service app pool which actually uses an account that is stored in the variable dollar account so by now the application pool is actually ready for you next you have to run another command let called as SP subscription setting service application and it actually uses an application pool which is stored in this variable followed by the name of your subscription setting service I'm going to call this as my SUB setting service app pool and then followed by the database name the database name I'm actually giving it as my subscription service DB here this is the name of the application pool in fact next you also have to create a proxy service for your subscription settings so you run slightly a different command new hyphen SP subscription settings service application proxy hyphen service application followed by here your app SUV SPC which is actually creating the application pool for you so this is the command that you actually require to be executed 
So let's copy this command and go back to the PowerShell and try to execute this command to create the subscription setting service. So let's simply paste the command and then wait for a second so it will actually go ahead and try to configure the subscription setting service for us. And you can see we have returned back to the command prompt. So right after we have executed that PowerShell script command to create the subscription setting service, we could see there are two new entries available for us in the list of service applications. We've got my SUB settings service app pool and we also have a proxy here. So what this has actually done, if you go back to SQL Server, you can see it has actually created for us the database what we have given in the PowerShell script command. So this is the output of the PowerShell script command what we have executed. So that command has actually created for us the subscription setting service along with the database. The subscription setting service cannot be created from the SharePoint Central Administration GUI and that is why we have actually performed that operation through PowerShell script. So after we have successfully configured the app management service and then the subscription setting service, it's time for us to configure the app URL. For that, we can go into SharePoint Central Administration and we have an option called as apps under which you have to go for the configure app URLs. So in our case, we will be giving the prefix as app. So let's go back to SharePoint Central Administration and configure our app URLs. You can also notice here in the app domain box, you have to type the isolated domain that we have created for hosting apps in DNS Manager. At that time, I have actually named this as contosoapps.com. So let's pull this in SharePoint Central Administration. I'm now inside SharePoint Central Administration. So let's click on Apps. And you can see under App Management, you have an option for Configure App URLs. Please click on that. When you click on the Configure App URLs, this is where you specify your domain name that you have created in the DNS Manager along with the prefix. You can notice app URLs will be created based on the following pattern. The app prefix will be an hexadecimal number that will be generated and the app ID. Let me make a correction. The app prefix is what we are actually going to give here. So I'm going to give the app prefix as app. App ID is the hexadecimal number that will be generated and then followed by the app domain name. So in our case, I'm going to give this as contosoapps.com. This is the same name that we have given at the time of creating the forward lookup zone in the DNS manager. So this is how the app URL format is like this. App prefix followed by app ID followed by the app domain. So once you fill these details, click on OK and that will end the configuration of the app URLs. So after we have successfully configured the app URL, it's time for us to create an app catalog where your apps will be stored. Again, we have to do that from the SharePoint Central Administration by clicking on Apps, App Management, Manage App Catalog. And if you already have a web application, you can choose the existing one or you can create a new web application. Let's perform the steps in SharePoint Central Administration. We're now inside SharePoint Central Administration. So I click on Apps. Under App Management, I see there's an option called as Manage App Catalog. Click on that. So once you click on the Manage App Catalog, it is asking you the selected web application does not have an app catalog associated to it. So that means to this web application, 
you can actually go ahead and try to create a new app catalog site. In any case, I'm actually going for the web application that I have created on the port number 25,000. And here I'm actually going to create a new app catalog site for this web application and simply click on OK. So as soon as I click on OK, it is actually prompting me to enter the information for the title and description for this app catalog. So I'm going to call this as my new app catalog and you can also have some kind of description and I'm actually going to have a new site collection called as my app catalog under the sites managed path of this web application so you can have a primary site collection administrator and you can have also have a couple of users here so in my case I'm actually going for the app developer 2 so I guess it is apps developer 2 let me correct that so that guy is going to be the primary site collection administrator and then optionally you can specify the users or groups and click on OK so this is how we're now creating an app catalog so now you can see the app catalog site has been created successfully yes if we wish we can actually access this URL so we're not trying to open the the brand new app catalog site that we have just created so this is how the brand new app catalog that we have just created looks like Yes, this is a place where you can actually store all your apps. So once everything is done successfully, we'll be actually creating a couple of apps and then we'll be trying to deploy those apps to this site. So, so far what we have done, we have configured few things inside the DNS manager and we have also configured few things in the SharePoint Central Administration in the form of uh, subscription setting service app management service we have also configured the app URL and we have also created an app catalog site now the fifth step is to now set some permissions for the user who I mean we have created a guy called as apps developer 2 now for this user we have to actually give rights to the apps management database as well as the subscription settings database because at the end of the day I'm actually going to login as apps developer 2 to develop apps from visual studio and i'll be deploying apps from visual studio and that is the reason why this new active directory user should have permissions on these two databases so let's go back to sql server to give him the enough permissions you can now see i'm inside sql server management studio so first of all under security we have this person called as apps developer 2 and simply double click on this guy go into the user mapping in my earlier demonstrations we have already given rights to SharePoint config database as well as the uh, the content database of our web application now for this person I need to give on the app management database so I click on the app management database and I actually make him as the owner of the database and also for my subscription service DB we're actually going to make him as owner and say OK. This step is also important otherwise you will still not be able to deploy apps to this web application from Visual Studio. So that is how we need to actually give enough permissions to the apps developer 2 on this list of databases this is the final step in our configurational steps so there is something that we need to do with the registry editor so once you open the registry editor 
you need to go into HK local machine system current control set control and LSA and you need to actually create a new key called as disable loopback check and you need to set its value to 1 why because normally when anybody tries to use an app yes they need to have permissions to use my app so so they will enter the username and password to use our apps but unfortunately for some reasons sometimes the login credentials dialog box doesn't go and it actually goes into a loop so that it actually keeps prompting you to enter the credentials to fix that issue we need to do this so to get this done let's go back to the history editor so I can actually right click on my start button click on run and I can go into reg edit and you can notice in the registry editor under H key local machine under system current control set control and here you have something like LSA and here you need to actually create that disable loop back check property for me this is already there so to show you how you can create this key I'll actually try to delete this key by myself and you can actually right click you can say new and you can click on the word 32 bit value and put that name and disable loop back check double click on this and set it value to one and say okay so that's it so now we have completely performed all the steps that we are supposed to do in order to configure your in-premises SharePoint server for apps development and deployment it's time for us to log in as apps developer 2 go back to visual studio try to develop an app and deploy and we should be successful so now we have performed all the steps that are required and now you can see I'm actually logged in as apps developer 2 and we are actually ready to develop an app using Visual Studio and deploy it. So let's go back to Visual Studio and run it as an administrator. And if you remember in the initial lectures of this code, we have actually created an app but we were unable to deploy that now we should be in a position to do that now so let's go back to the same app that we have created in the earlier lectures so this was a simple SharePoint hosted app that I have selected so let's go back to view and solution explorer and you can notice these are the various folders of our app See earlier when I tried to deploy, the deployment was not successful, but now it should be because we did all our steps exactly. So before I actually deploy, let's actually see what is this SharePoint hosted app is doing currently. So first of all, let's try to inspect the various folders that the solution is having. First of all, it has actually created a feature for us. So when I double click on my feature, you can notice this feature is deploying my ASPX pages. It is deploying my scripts, especially the jQuery files. And there's also a very special file called as app.js. And you can see it is also deploying my content files, which are CSS files. And if you are using any images in this app, it is deploying those images as well. So all these files are actually getting deployed through this feature. That's the first thing that we should understand. And if you can open the individual folders, yes, you see there is an app.css. You can see those images. And this is your default.aspx where you design your app and you have the scripts. So the most important thing here is the, the default.aspx file where you can actually design the user interface or the functionality of your app so already when you open the default.aspx page you will see some 
pre-written code and which you can obviously customize to implement much better apps and this aspx file speaks to many of the js files including the app.js so i'll explain to you now the code in the default.aspx along with the app.js so first if we can see in the default.aspx especially if we can see in the content placeholder which is placeholder main there is a div tag and there's also a paragraph whose id is message so initially i have a message something like say initializing so there's also a comment from microsoft guy saying the following message will be replaced with the username whoever tries to use this app when you actually run the app so that code is already been done inside the app.js and app.js has already been taken into references here so that's it so now let's actually go back to your app.js and see what they did so in app.js so inside this app.js there is some pre-written jquery code first of all you can see uh, with the help of the javascript api i'm actually trying to get the context of the current site where my app is running so i'm trying to say sp.clientcontext.getCurrent. so you basically get the context of the current app site or app web so with that context object i can say i can get the handle of my website which is my app web dot get current user these are all javascript functions so i'll get the name of the user who is actually running this app anyway i'm actually currently logged in as apps developer 2 so ideally apps developer 2 should come into this user then we are actually implementing the jquery ready function i'm pretty sure you guys must be knowing the jquery by now but in any, in any case if somebody is not familiarized with jquery basically this ready is an important function in jquery which we're attaching to the page object your document this function is pretty similar to window.unload in javascript but the difference between jquery ready function and window.unload is window.unload will normally fire after all the elements of your page are rendered onto the browser so that will be uh, there you can expect some delays in case if the page is having too many elements whereas the jquery ready function will actually get executed as soon as the dom of the page is available to it so it doesn't have to wait until everything gets rendered so that's how ready can be a bit faster than window.onload so inside my predefined ready function i'm calling a function called as get username please be noted all this code was actually pre-written for us when we have created the app not even one line of code we have written here so i'm just trying to explain whatever is been written here so from the ready function when i'm calling the get username function i'm trying to load the user object properties so you're trying to say context dot load of user so you're basically requesting the sharepoint server get me some information about the user who is currently logged in and that request you need to submit to the sharepoint server asynchronously by using a very special function called as execute query async with the context object so this request will be submitted to the sharepoint server with the help of the execute query async function if everything goes well it will call the success function if something goes wrong it will call the failure function so what am i doing in the success function obviously the this function name can be anything this function name can be anything but the first function will be called when everything is successful in the on get username success function i'm simply trying to access the message id what we have in the aspx page you can see there is a paragraph id whose id is message 
So we're trying to access this message by saying dollar is your jQuery object. Using jQuery, I'm trying to access that P element, hash message, hash is for ID. Dot text is hello, followed by this username, user dot get title. So uh, the ready function is calling get username. Get username will call this function. So I should see hello username in my paragraph. If something goes wrong, we should see an alert. So this is how we have the code in default.aspx and app.js. Also, if you can notice in the app manifest.xml, this is where you actually name your app. So while I was talking to you about to the URL structure, at the end of the URL, you see the app name. This is the app name which you can specify by yourself. This is the app title and this is the app name. Yes, we are not talking about these permissions, all that stuff at this stage. So simply, and also you can see the hosting type is uh, SharePoint hosted. And the start page for this app is the default.aspx. So this is how we have actually created a brand new SharePoint hosted app. And also, when I press F4, on my project you can see where am I actually going to uh, deploy this you can notice in my SharePoint central administration when I take you to my application management and uh, view all site collections and the 25,000 web application we have actually created an app catalog so this URL of your app catalog to which you would like to deploy you have to copy and paste it here so which I have already done that here. So here I can select my app catalog here. So we're actually planning to deploy this brand new app to this site collection. Perfect, so we're almost there. Now let's actually go ahead and try to rebuild your solution for any syntax, syntactical errors. Everything is successful. It's time for us to deploy. If all of, all of our steps have been successful, we should be successful in deploying as well. Let's go to the output window and just watch here how your app is actually getting deployed step by step. Earlier, in the beginning of this course, obviously, we were getting many errors. So now, after all the hard work that we did, now everything is successful and now your app is being successfully installed onto your SharePoint server. So as I said, your app, when it, when it actually gets deployed, it will run in its own unique URL. So this is the URL what these guys have created for us. So if you wish, you can actually copy this URL and open it in the browser as a subsite itself. So let's go back to the browser and let's actually try to paste that app site URL. This is your app web URL. So your app itself is absolutely running in its own website. So you can notice app hyphen, this is your app ID, which is your hexadecimal. And this is the domain name that you have given in the DNS manager. So now I'm actually typing my username and then the password and my domain name say okay so you're now actually trying to connect to that app you're now looking at the output of that app can you see now hello followed by the username so this output is actually coming to us because of the code that we did in app.js yes this predefined code we can customize as per our needs so our app is actually running in its own subsite so obviously looking at this url is really very important for us app hyphen what is app it was the prefix that i have actually given in the sharepoint central administration so in the sharepoint central administration when i clicked on apps when i clicked on configure app urls i gave this prefix 
So that's what I'm seeing here as prefix. And then there is a hash ID. ContosoApps.com is my app domain name, followed by the host site URL 25,000 slash site slash my app catalog is your host site URL, followed by SharePoint app one is your app name itself. So that's how your app is now running successfully in its own website as an independent application. It has no contact with the host site but yes the site is been hosted onto this my app catalog site so my app catalog is host web and this entire stuff is your app web so that is how in this course I have shown you how we can configure your SharePoint 2013 in premises server for developing and deploying apps so we have just deployed our very first app to the sharepoint server and this was the app url that was actually constructed for us but yes instead of accessing this url directly by me in the browser i can as well visit the app catalog site that we have created where you will see this app is being hosted by this app catalog site to get this done let's go back to sharepoint central administration and let's actually try to visit the app catalog site under 25,000. So I can copy this URL and you can try to open this app catalog site. And when you go to the site contents, you can see your app is actually available here. Currently, you can notice the URL where inside 25,000 sites, my app catalog, but the moment I click on SharePoint app one, you've been completely redirected into a brand new subsite, a brand new URL, which app, which, which your app is actually using. And you're actually getting this message as an output of the functionality that you have written in the app. So that is how we can actually configure a SharePoint server for developing and deploying apps yes for any reason if you wish to delete your app yes you can actually select and remove your app so that is how we can see our app being part of our catalog site so when did I create the catalog site yes I've shown you this step we can when I clicked on apps when I clicked on manage app catalog you can see Initially, there was no URL, so we have actually created an app catalog from here. So obviously now it is not actually giving me any option to create a catalog site because there already exists one. So that is how I've shown you how we can configure a SharePoint server for developing and deploying the apps. Each of your app runs absolutely with a unique URL. If you remember when I was explaining you the uh, app URL structure, I did give an example. In fact, what I did, this URL of our app, I have actually copy pasted into my slide just for you to explain you in a much better way. So this was my explanation earlier and that's what we have achieved now. I can see app is my prefix. I can see the hash ID, which is my app ID. ContosoApps.com is my app domain. 25,000 sites, my app catalog is my host web. SharePoint app one is like my app name. At the end of the day, we did all the hard work just to have this URL constructed and there, so that you will be actually able to run your app in its own app domain so that's the whole idea behind this entire exercise so just to conclude this codes when we have started this codes with the with our very first lecture we weren't able to deploy apps from visual studio to a sharepoint server on the last lecture we are actually able to deploy the apps to a SharePoint server. So that's the success 
what we have achieved. Just a small add-on to end this codes. Actually, in June 2015, Microsoft has made a small announcement that they're actually going to rename some of the terms that we've been using. So all these days, we've been using the term apps for SharePoint. So it's actually getting renamed to SharePoint add-ins. So, so, so that does, you might see in most of the documentations on the web, instead of you, you, instead of you seeing apps for SharePoint, you might actually see them as SharePoint add-ins. Currently, wherever you see it as SharePoint app model, you might actually see them as SharePoint add-in model. App webs might be called as add-in web and app parts will be called as add-in parts. So I'm pretty sure uh, this documentation uh, with these new terms, you don't find it so immediately because it was just announced in the year um, 2015 of June itself. So it's just been around some 15, 20 days. So I'm pretty sure at least for the couple of months. So we'll still see these terms on our documentations and thanks for watching this course and uh, i'm pretty sure you've been benefited with the content that we have given to you now we should be in, you should be in a position to develop and deploy apps to your in-house sharepoint 2013 server